now more than ever, people need to go within and plug into that cellular memory, plug into divine source, detach as much as possible from the matrix. Hello again, everybody. This is James Bartley, and you're listening to Bartley's Commentaries on the Cosmic Wars. Today, my topic is the making of a host. A host is a apparent human being with a genetic profile and subjected to a certain degree of indoctrination, brainwashing, manipulation, trauma, and the like, which enables one or more non-human entities usually non-physical from our three-dimensional, rapidly becoming fourth-dimensional perspective. Uh, These are beings that typically reside out of phase, out of our particular dimensional frequency. And because of this underlying predisposition due to genetics, indoctrination, and other factors, which I'll get into, it allows these, from our 3D perspective, once again, essentially non-corporeal, non-physical beings to develop an attachment and in many cases, eventually assimilate what I call eventually interface with the host human, the host hybrid human, to be more exact because we are talking about hybrids here of one form or another, one stripe or another. In truth, many of us are hybrids. What I'm going to be referring to today is the hybrid host who are all around us in society. They've been infiltrated, insinuated into all the major institutions, especially in the media, especially in cinema, in Hollywood, the military, the intelligence community, etc., etc. So I'm going to talk about how the process of becoming a host works and how, and combined with the fact that there are so many non-corporeal, essentially interdimensional beings, or at any rate, beings that have the means to alter their vibrational frequency, this hosting process allows them to take up humans as a host. And at that point, they can begin to work through the host as a medium to affect changes in our reality from a micro family level, which can be quite extensive when you consider the extended family or clans or tribal groupings, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, we just keep scaling this up and you'll see what I mean as as we go along. And you take that process to the logical extreme of flooding our reality with as many hosting entities taking up host in a parasitic fashion. This process has radically escalated the last couple of years due to this rollout. These parasitic interdimensional beings, or some of them are physical beings that have the ability to project themselves, essentially project themselves astrally into another being for purposes of taking them over. And these beings are all over the place. They essentially share the same... I wouldn't say the same frequency necessarily, but a similar or a close frequency bandwidth. Those with the etheric third eye vision can see them. And also, as I'll get into in this commentary, those that are on certain types of gateway drugs that literally open them up, allow them to see into this arena, if you will. Increasingly, this is going on now with with the rollout, where more and more people are seeing these entities. The point being is that these entities have always been around, but now conditions have been set up to enable these entities en masse to start taking up people as host. 
in huge numbers. One of the things we have to come to grips with is the fact that many human family trees, if you go far enough in the past, you will find cannibalism. Not in every family tree, of course, but in many. And what this means is those acts of cannibalism, however remote in the distant past, are still present in the genetic ancestral memory of the people living today. And this is more pronounced in certain cultures and it manifests itself in a number of ways in, the, in those cultures. Not only does the cannibalism stay embedded, if you will, in the genetics, but it's also present in the morphic resonance field, the M field that Rupert Sheldrake talks about. And these archontic beings, particularly reptilians, uh, demonic entities, etc., they know that not only within the morphic field, but in the DNA profile, in the ancestral memory of people, where cannibalism existed in their, in their lineage, there are, for lack of a better term, and I've talked about this before, receptors or something like it which enable these entities, these archontic parasitic entities to plug themselves into and thereby establish a foothold with the intention of creating a stronghold within someone's energy field, energy bodies and in their mind the cannibal receptor is latent within many people and I believe over time they, the powers that be, have done things uh, with the food and with certain treatments so-called which has strengthened this receptor made it more viable so when the time comes when possessing entities have gained a foothold in people they can begin manipulating the dreams the behaviors the the waking consciousness of individuals and especially if they can get them involved in cult-like activity they can definitely steer them in a cannibalistic direction the next best thing they can do is put them in an environment, a military environment, for example, where they are obliged as part of the uh, occupation to kill others, to kill, develop a bloodlust for killing, develop a sadistic need, a sadistic obsession with killing. And this leads them in certain directions. They, they may never become a full-on cannibal, but for some with a genetic predisposition, a psychological profile, the reptilian bloodline is very strong in a family. The mere act of killing, especially killing in large numbers, can definitely affect the psyche of certain people. Uh, it's been observed on numerous occasions when someone is seen too much combat and it's a certain psyche, a certain personality, a certain genetic profile. But when they've seen too much combat, seen too much killing, experienced too much trauma for a prolonged period of time, uh, some of them go into what they call a thousand yard stare or a, also referred to as a thousand year stare where they just kind of stare bl blankly off at a point in space somewhere. And some of them become nonverbal, pretty much. They become very insular. Kind of a darkness pervades over them. And the accounts I've read, this is going back to World War II at least, some of the other combat vets in the same units will say amongst themselves, stay away from that guy. Stay away. There's something wrong with him. 
and I read the account one time of a Australian SAS guy. He'd come back from Afghanistan really traumatized and he was having these recurring dreams of picking through a battlefield and uh, seeing human, bo human body parts and then at one point he found in a shell crater uh, a severed human hand and then he picked it up and then he took a bite out of it and then the shock of that made him wake up. The point being is that once that foothold is established these entities will then begin well one of the things they can do is create these recurring dreams like I just talked about and this is aided and abetted by sometimes direct astral dreamscape manipulation where they're trying to serve you up uh, bloody food and serve you up blood uh, by they I mean reptilians and other nefarious beings in the astral dreamscape they will do this they will create some kind of food concoction but deliberately leave it like a like a bloody mess like it's uncooked like uncooked meat uncooked steak and they're trying to push it on you right it'll either be a reptilian or a reptilian in the guise of a human and they're trying to make you eat it and you know, my rule of thumb is Never eat or drink anything in the astral dreamscape. That rule number one. And this whole process, and I, I just kind of diverged here into cannibalism, uh, because that if you take this to the extreme uh, conclusion, the extreme end, that's where they want to lead a lot of people. For some of these bloodlines, remember, they're also, for lack of a better term, alien abductees. So occasionally and quite often, for some people and some bloodlines, some family trees, these ETs, oftentimes reptilians or reptilian cosmic vassals doing the heavy medical lifting for the reptilians, will abduct certain people in certain bloodlines and essentially change them from the inside out, make them more and more reptilian. More and more things will be done to the neurology, to the nervous system, you name it that will make them more, for lack of a better term, reptilian. And it's more than just an infusion of DNA. They rewire the, uh, the neurology uh, in so many ways. And then this is all augmented by the cinema, by repetitive messaging in the news media. It's very much a they live matrix scenario where everything is meant to reinforce everything else. I've had Jeff Brady on the show, and he's talked about UFO mimicry. In this instance, what we're talking about is uh, essentially human mimicry. It's these rep primarily reptilians, but they're not the only beings that take up people as hosts. But they affect the most changes. This is literally their sphere of influence, and people are starting to catch on, even surface level types now are starting to catch on that there's a non-human element behind this. Uh, another point about the cannibalism, uh, and it bears repeating, uh, 